Good morning. I'm going to give you all a chance to hop on here. I'm going to situate that just a little bit. Easier, better. How are you this morning? Come on in to the last this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to be talking about motives and the three women. I had an um, encounter with the Lord. They began to speak to me. So let's just worship. Let's just, we thank you, Lord. Hey, Prophet Robert. We are pulling into 2020. Come on. And you're not just pulling in slow. Here, flaming fireball, rolling mightily, swiftly into 2020. Come on. What time can stand in your way? There is none that can. What disease can stand in your way? There's none that can. Oh! Show us your glory, Lord. Your worship is a weapon. Reminding your enemy of what shameful events await him. Oh! Thank you, Jesus. No! is dragging him down to a watery grave. Come on. There was a wall of opposition against you, but they saw and heard your worship. You're on the front lines. Front liners, they are worshipers. They're the children and the worshipers. Those are the ones sent out first. Those with great faith like a child and those who worship well. You're shifting it in your region. You're transforming your nation. The Lord is doing great feats through you for His glory. where we belong in your presence oh God in your presence oh Lord we love you we praise you we adore you there's no one like you Lord no not one thank you God at some point we're going to be in John chapter 3 if I wrote it down right I was later getting on here because I was writing as fast as I could. God began to give me downloads and I was just writing and writing pages, pages. Oh, this isn't looking good. Did I write it down wrong? Oh, maybe it's further in the chapter. come off of the cobra. Come on. It's been exposed. The hood has been yanked off of your enemy. Its face has been exposed. Come on. The Lord is vindicating you. He is pulling you off into glory realms. You're going to be so busy with the Lord, although you know 
He's vindicated you. You're too busy to worry with it. Hey, Teresa, Kim. Let me know your city and state. Volker, Boyce, Cheryl, Martha Ann. I'm Tiffany Blackwell. I'm in Shreveport, Louisiana. The double-double. The Lord gave me double-double in 2019, and I went to call it the quadruple, and the Lord said, don't you dare limit me. You think I can't do the quadruple all at one time? You think that I did the double, and then I did the double, that you're going to call that the quadruple? He said, no, no, that was the double-double. He said, but let me show you what's coming. What's coming is greater. Oh, what's coming is bigger. Oh! Lord, we just want to see your face. And if that's got wrapped in your glory, so be it. Come on, his face is hidden in the clouds. That glory cloud. I have to push past through the interference. For some of you, that may include fasting. For some of you, you have to fast to be able to hear his voice. You have to fast. Come on. There's Kentucky and Texas on here. Louisiana, who else is on here? Roxanne, Elena, Chris, Denise, Donna. Oh, Jesus, we love you. What are you gonna have to do to see his face again? Show me, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show me your ah. glory. And for some of you right now, the Lord just beheaded what came after you. He ripped the head off of Haman. Show me your glory. Lord, we just need to see your glory. More and more an increase of who you are, a decrease in who we are, an increase of who you are in us. Come on. This is the time, I'm telling you. People keep saying it, I keep hearing it. And I've already seen a lot of it, but more is coming. This is the time of what? God's dealing with us in time, showing us that he's king of time, meaning what? Time is reversible. Time is redeemable. Time is restorable. God is taking what the enemy robbed you of and is restoring it better than it was before you were ever harmed. I was listening to a video of Apostle Dale and John Coleman. Uh, I believe it was last night. <laughs> My tastes sort of run together sometimes with all this. It was last night. And he said it would be like God restoring... Ten years of stuff in one year. Come on. What would have taken a normal person ten years? Less than a year. Come on. Who can believe me in this? In the blink of an eye, overnight, from one day to the next, from rolling into twenty night from twenty nineteen into twenty twenty. Now we know in scripture Haman was hanged. But I'm telling you, I saw him. The noose went around his neck. He was grabbed by the throat, and then his head came off. I'm telling you. You know, when you see a cobra, you know, they've got the hood. The hood is scary. The thing opens like this, and that's before he strikes. But the Lord has ripped its hood off. He's ripped its body in half. Come on. He's, he's taken its fangs and crushed them. Never to envenomate anybody ever again. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. I'm decreeing this prophetically over your lives right now. Some of you, you know you were envenomated by other people. You know you were envenomated by the enemy. Whether it was through voices of your own or what. <clears throat> I need to let us worship. Your world is shaking right now because it's the Lord. It's not the devil, it's the Lord. He's freeing you.
This time the water rising is not the devil, it is the Lord! <laughs> Come on. There were those who wanted to steal what the Lord gave you. But anything given by the Lord can't be stolen. That's a fearful mindset. This is called face to face by. No, it's not. Sorry. <laughs> this is called Even Then by Micah Tyler. The song before that was Show Me Your Glory by Jesus Culture. <laughs> Come on, he's with you, he's with me, he's with us. 2020 is the year, like in 2019, some of you let go of the hand of Jesus, or you were holding this hand, but you didn't have a lot of insight. You didn't know where you were going, what's going on. 2020, you're holding the hand of God, and he's letting you see. It's like daylight. You're getting to see things with a greater revelation. <laughs> Your enemy thought and hoped you'd never see. Come on. This is This is face to face by Matt Kearney. Hey Carly. Hey Teresa. Suzanne. Woo! It's thunder. The thunder of the Lord is hitting walls of hindrances right now. There is breakthrough in your life. God is breaking in and breaking through. Breaking into you because you said, Lord, come. And breaking through the interference because you said, Lord, they have opposed you, not me. God asked you to do it and something stood in your way. It was the Lord they opposed. Not you. They tried to stop Jesus. Come on, they tried to stop him too, but they didn't. They couldn't. Face to face. Face to face. Well, I can't see the line in the picture if I do that. There we go. Oh, Lord. God take it, he's taking a shoestring, so to speak, a, a needle and thread, and he's taken the past few years for many of you. You've looked, and God has said, look behind you, not to stay there or be like a pillar of salt, like Lot's wife, who looked back with regret and didn't want to leave and move forward. But you are wanting to move forward, but he says, but first, before we move into 2020, I want to let you look back and see what I've done for you. He's showing you and connecting all of the dots and pulling it tight pulling it all together so that it makes sense. And you're taking that boldness and assurity that Jesus has you and he's got your back and the Lord's backing you 100%. All of heaven is backing you. Stand in your purpose. Stand in your destiny. Walk it out with you. He's given you those new hinds feet. Supernatural tennis shoes, supernatural high heels. Come on, you are climbing heights and running places. Mm. Everyone can get there if they want. How bad do they want Jesus? How bad do they want it? What are they willing to lay down and give it up? It'll cost you everything to go where some want to go. Come on, where you want to go, it's going to cost you everything. If you hold something back, Come on. It could keep you from going in. But when you say it's yours, Lord, 
I want him face to face. I want to see God face to face. Do you hear me? I want to see him face to face. We're going to listen to this song. This next one. It's Catherine Mullins, Take Me In. I woke up this morning in the bed and I looked down. My alarm, when I say I woke up, Alexa woke me up and said, you better get up. Morning word, get up. I looked down. Silver was on my palms in rose gold colors. And then this palm, it had oil just pouring down, pouring down. Mm. Fresh new oil for a new season. Come on. I speak that over every single person. Welcome here. You're beautiful, delightful, faithful. Oh. I'm seeing those who've submitted to a cleansing process of that coal to your mouth who said no to the flesh, no to earthly desires. Not that earthly desires can be evil, not all of them. But because of this, you're in the clear flame, the flame of the Lord that goes beyond yellow, red, and orange, goes beyond the blue flame. You stepped off into the clear, where the impurities have burned away. Very few walk there. But all are welcome. You're marked and you're different. You're never going to be like everybody else, especially those in the world. Jesus has saved you for himself. Jealous lover. Jealous is his name. Somebody say that, here I am. Type out that, here I am. Declare that over yourself, here I am. Holiness is not jumping over hurdles and through hoops of do's and don'ts. It's being Holy Spirit led. doing what he says when he says to do it being in alignment with him to the point that if he says go into that building step into that street talk to that person move to that city you do it look at this I'm telling you as your names are scrolling by the Lord says these are my faithful Angie, Diana, Cheryl, Mandy, Suzanne, Janet, Lavette, Chris, Pam, Denise, Teresa, Rantia. Come on, the Lord is saying, these are my faithful. Who else is on here? God's talking about you. And you may go, but I wasn't faithful. Maybe you weren't two seconds ago, but you are now. You decided to follow God. It's just one decision away. <laughs> Look at this eight. 
New beginnings. New beginnings. Take me in into your bosom. God, we need you. I'm hearing people's thoughts right now. Somebody, you're not in menopause. You're nowhere near menopause. Stop agreeing with the world and the ways of the world. God is perfecting fertility, spiritually and naturally. I see women and men coming with the cup to the river, to the stream, to the spring, dipping it in and drinking. Drinking of those waters and fountains gives you the power to cross over in 2020 in a victorious, bold, fiery manner. You're just one cup, one sip away. I command you to be lit on fire right now by the Lord God Almighty. Come on, that new flame to be lit in you. I speak that. I'm decreeing and declaring it. It's the glory of kings to seek and find. See, he's hidden himself for you, not from you, for you. He says, Come be with me in the secret place. It's the place that the devil can't enter. It's the place that no matter what's going on in your life, you can escape to. It's the place of salvation. The bosom of Jesus. Position in his heart. Seated. On a throne with the Lord. God in heaven, we need more of you. I feel his love pouring and burning, desiring so much. Oh, he's desiring every single person that's on here watching and listening. He's desiring you, your face, your hand to embrace you. You know, the love is enough, the blood is enough. Oh, thank you, God. It's the blood of Jesus is enough to break me in the inner court. Inner court. Past the golden light and through the incense also. I'm walking past everybody and everything to get there. When you go into the clear flame, that's when your eyes blend with the eyes of Jesus. Your heart blends with His. You no longer have your own heart. You no longer have your own seed bed and fertile garden, but you have His garden growing within you. Come on, you no longer have your eyes, but yours have been replaced by His. You have been fused and joined with Him in the soul. Made one in the spirit. Come on. You have the mind, will, and emotions of Jesus Himself. the greatest privilege and opportunity. This is Catherine Mullins, Sherry. It's Catherine Mullins. Take me in. That's the name of the song.
going to reduce the volume greatly because I'm going off into the teaching now. Y'all, look at me. See, I'm sitting here trying to see. Oh, what's the next song? Oh, you unravel me. Oh, see how I could just stay in worship. Oh, in that loving moment. Mm. But he gave me a word today that he wanted me to speak. I had an encounter with the Lord. And I was like, Lord, what do I do with that? And anytime I have these encounters, I was playing one of the three women. But anytime I have these encounters, I always ask myself, what aspect or part of those three women could I be? Or the people or the players in the dream. Do I have that in me? If it's something negative, is that somewhere in me? Do I have anything in common with that? So although today I'm t talking about three different type of people, we could say at some point in our lives we've all been one of these three women. Now these women, even though they were women, really represent neither male nor female. Okay? So that means it's a, um, not genderless in the sense of something demonic, but how the Lord says there's neither male nor female. There's neither uh, Jew nor Gentile. Come on, in the spirit, we're one. So this word is specific to all people, not just males, not just females, even though the encounter represented three women because we are the bride. We're the bride, Okay. The glory rams and the new oil that's being poured out. To stay there, to keep it, to remain there. It takes daily choices and just deciding, you know what? I'm going to do it God's way today. My flesh says it wants to do X, Y, Z. Oh, I'd like to bite that person's head off. Oh, I'd like to push them over. Oh, I would like to. But instead, we choose, we choose to do it God's way. So these three women, they all three had different motives. And we're going to talk about that very quickly. Woman, woman number one, the first woman that God showed me, she was given permission by people, authorized by the world, had permission to do what they were doing. And they had been given their chance to perform well, they seemed to be performing well. They were on the itinerary. They were televised. Come on, they were, we could say they were, um, you know, they could be, as an example, God, there were so many layers in this dream. I saw everything from these three women um, working in a lunchroom counter together. I saw them being in a school play together. So this individual, number one, would have been doing the lead in the school play, so to speak, okay? We're going to get into that person's motive, but that sounds really good. That sounds like, hey, that's awesome. That's somebody walking in purpose. That sounds like really great. Uh, my goodness, everything's going well with them. They, they, they seem to be in favor with God and with man, so it would seem. Well, let's go on to number two. Number two was a good friend of the bridegroom. And you might think, wait a second, you just said that was a woman. Now you're talking about a man. But remember, these terms are not gender specific. There's neither male nor female. And what God was showing me, the truths of what he's trying to show. Okay? So this woman number two was a good friend of woman number one. And woman number one is being referred to as... A friend of the bridegroom. So now it was like they're two men. Okay. And the second person is the support person. For person number one. They're happy for the groom. Or the bride. Come on. They're happy for their friend. To help them accomplish their goals. But. The friend of the bridegroom. Was noticed. As they worked in the field. As they loved on others, their gifts were manifested. Holy Spirit moved through them. Okay? The gifts made room for this individual. Come on, your gifts will make room for you. Someone came 
to the friend of the bridegroom, though. Someone came to this woman and said, asked her to stop being so good, to stop allowing themselves to be seen, to hide themselves again, to uh, not you know, to mask the anointing, to squash Holy Spirit, come on, to not operate fully in who they were. Because they said the reason was because it was the hour and the time for the first person, their friend. This can speak of generations. This can speak of one generation refusing to yield to let the next generation come in. Um, it could be speaking of one generation's entitlement, refusing to let God do what he wants to do. So this individual, woman number two, had to make a decision. Listen to people or listen to God. They could dampen and be less than what God called them to be to please people. Or they could continue being nice and kind and loving and generous. And when God showed up, just let him show up. So this individual asked God, and what did God say? They said, Lord, am I being obedient? And the Lord said, yes, they were being obedient. That they were working. And that they were noticed by friends and family and people. And don't feel guilty for being who you are. Their heart motive. They were not trying to take their friend's job or place. Come on. The Lord told them not to dampen themselves. This is a word for somebody on here right now. Don't you let the voice of people, friends or foes, confidants, any voice, it could be spiritual parents. Come on, it doesn't matter who it is. It could be your covering. Whoever, whatever. You don't let people tell you to dampen yourself or hide your gifts or hide who God says you are or to be. Now, that's using wisdom. When God tells you to do a thing, you just act like the nature and the heart of Christ. He manifests and shows up how he wills. And the Lord said, flow naturally. And if by doing and being obedient to what I've called you to, that someone would ask you to do something that normally the first person would have done and assumed was always their permissible right to do, don't feel guilty. Now, in this encounter with the Lord, this individual was, um, again, they were helping in the field. They were helping those, and it's like it suddenly shifted to this individual was helping older generation people. This individual was working in the field and such. But again, they were noticed. People came around them and said, hey, we would like you to do this, 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 and this. They sought the Lord on it. The Lord said to do it. But this is what they also said. I'm here to support them. But then the Lord stepped in and said, but if they ask you, come on. If you are somewhere doing something, here's an example. Suppose it's um, somebody's got a, a television show appearance as an example. Okay, they're scheduled to be on that show. If someone were to see you and say, hey, hey, we want you in that spot. Well, they're there to be scheduled in that slot. They're not sick. Nothing's wrong with them. You wouldn't go behind their back and do anything weird like that. You would say, oh, well, on another day, certainly you're welcome to invite me and have me come back at that time or after. You know, if you have a spot later in the day, which is usually not the case. You know, they do these things. Sometimes weeks or months in advance. Then you can do so. So, person number one, they're, they were entitled. Their heart motive was that of entitlement. Person number two uh, had a heart motive after the Lord. They weren't trying 
to do anything except please the Lord. Now let's look at the third woman. What did the third woman look like? What were the characteristics of the third woman the Lord showed me? Well, again, this represents the bride. But again, this is neither male nor female. This can be men. This can happen in a business arena, in a family arena. This could happen uh, in a ministry setting. These types of things could happen out in the world. Wherever they happen, everyone goes through these situations. You're all, all of us are given choices every single day on what we will look at and look into. So going into 2020, we need to look at our heart motives, but this is the year of boldness, a great boldness coming on God's people. It's not really a year. It's more like many years, an extension of time of boldness for the uh, people of God, especially the prophets. The third woman was determined to do evil, but here's the thing though. The Lord said the person in the beginning didn't understand what they were doing was evil. They knew it was questionable. They knew it wasn't quite right. But they wanted what they wanted. They had determined to be evil, to do evil. Yet there was an immaturity because they didn't recognize, even though they determined to do and be evil, they didn't recognize they were evil because they were immature. And we have to look at people in the world like that or very immature Christians. We have to understand that when people do things oftentimes, it's through immaturity. Immaturity. Okay? They may have an evil heart motive and yet they are unaware of it because the enemy of this world has blinded their eyes and heart to seeing even their own actions and why they're doing it. That's how we have to love others and grace them. Well, this is what the Lord showed me. They were what? They wanted to be seen. They were after money. They were after position and power. Now the Lord said this is a time and a season where he is confronting things, not just in the church, but in the world. A great confrontation of evil in all the different arenas and mountains that you could imagine. That exists. So this individual was confronted by the bride's friend, which would be woman number two. This bride's friend represented in this encounter, it represented the prophet. It represented God speaking to the person, but also prophets addressing truth and correcting and righting wrongs. But prophets have to operate in love. You don't walk up to somebody who's doing wrong and say, um, slap them across the face and tell them they're being evil. You have to ask God, what can I say to this person? Because the goal is to get them to repent. The goal is to get them to be one with us and in unity. What can I say? You know, there are times where you just have to walk up and say, that's rebellion. It goes against what the Lord says. You know, I've had some friends on Facebook. Most of the time when I see them post stuff, the Lord is like, don't address that. Keep scrolling. And I'm like, oh, okay. But then there'll be times where he's like, jump on there and just say that's not biblical and post the scripture. And I'm like, mm. okay. <laughs> I do that and I scroll on. Sometimes I hear back from him. Sometimes I don't. But that's not my, I don't need to worry about that. If God said to do it, do it. Just because you see something wrong doesn't mean you're the person authored to say something about it. You always ask, well, Lord, you've highlighted that to me. What do you want me to do about it? It might be for you to pray. So the prophet, with the words in the mouth of God, there's lots of correction coming to the body of Christ, the bride, through prophets, through the leadership, through leaders. But they're going to be doing it in a loving way. This is how you'll know the prophets of the Lord and the prophets of who have agreed with the enemy. Sometimes prophets who've agreed with the enemy don't know they are operating as the enemy. Do you hear me? Some people do not know. They don't have that revelation yet. So this woman number two, or the prophet, speaking as God, confronted with others the woman that was being evil, which can represent a man or a woman, or groups of people. Come on. Well, what happened? Well, the person with the evil motive began to pout. 
and they said they had to do it. It wasn't their fault. It came easy for other people. Hey, Kathy. It came easy for other people. They were left defenseless. They were left all alone. They, they had to make the choices they made. They said, because, they said, well, the first woman, come on, they got whiny and said, they have all those people backing them, all their friends and family. Come on, have we ever been that way? I mean, we need to look at what I'm talking about, the first, second, and the third, these three women. At some point in our lives, we've all been one of those in some way, shape, or form, okay? But this Encounter with the Lord has multiple levels and layers all throughout it. But right now, although we should be looking at this to determine, have we agreed on any count with the enemy, with the wrong motive, but also see that there is a huge division that the Lord is helping to adjust and fix and realign people for unity. So this individual was confronted. They whined and complained and said it wasn't their fault that they had to be evil, that they had to operate and act the way they did because everybody else had it easy. They got their friends, their family, their followers, their ministry, their business, their opportunities. They had it easy going in life. They were always accepted, etc. Now, this is how this individual, this third person, okay, they had attained the lead role in a play from what? It looked like they had been given a business opportunity. Another time it looked like they were on a television station. And it looked like and they were continuously in different situations and scenarios that the Lord was opening up to me and showing me. Because anytime you get have an encounter with the Lord and he gives you a download, it applies to a bunch of different things. A lot of different things. So he began to show me different scenarios this could play out in. In a school system, in a business, in a church, in a ministry, in the world. Facebook land, whatever. He began to show me lots of different ways this could play out with different people. Um, so this person with the evil motive said all that they did, the backstabbing, was okay and justifiable because they had to, they had nothing, they had no one, and they had to do what they had to do to get to the top. Because in their mind, the goal was to get to the top or to attain or to do. They saw other people with it, and they were determined to have it. Well, you know what? We need to be determined that we have what God wants us to have and to attain it in the way that he says or what happens. He will, he'll hit the reset button, and you'll go back to the beginning at the uh, back of the line. You'll go back to the back of the line and have to start all over at the beginning again. Suzanne said, I'm describing what just went on at her workplace. Oh, dear gosh, at the last place she worked. Wow. So let's discuss some of these motives. So woman number one, and again, this can represent men or women. This was just, and you know, when God was showing me, quote, the bride, there are some people that are the bride, and then there are others, because the woman number three, she was called the bride, Okay. But she represented, one minute it was representing the bride, people who are deceived and think that's how you build the kingdom or a business or a ministry or family or life. Come on, they don't know. They're ignorant. And in another instant, it was an ungodly individual and represented secular um, people that did not know Jesus. And even some who said they knew Jesus, but they really did not. They didn't serve or love the Jesus that we do. They were deceived. So let's look at heart motives. Number one, the first woman expected it. They were entitled and they lost it all due to entitlement, a motive of entitlement. Now, expectation isn't wrong if we are expecting from Jesus. I expect my bills to be paid. I expect, I expect. Why? He's my husband, my father even in heaven. Come on. I expect daddy to take care of me in a nice manner. He's God. He's not like some earthly man who's doing the best he can at a job and he may or may not get paid or his own commission or something. He owns it all. All of heaven is at his disposal to take care of me in the best known manner possible. So we are to have an entitlement or expectation uh, 
mindset, so to speak, that God will come through for you, that Jesus is providing for you. Some people say, oh, but Christians, we're meant to suffer. And I understand that there are times or seasons or certain things that go on. But I will tell you this. Even when I went through situations, what looked like there wasn't a lot of money. Food, there was no money to buy food. Food multiplied in the cabinet supernaturally and would just appear there. We don't operate in the world system. We live, we're the supernatural babies. We operate in the supernatural. If you want to be without money, food, and expect evil to hit your home and stay there, well, I suggest you please stop that. Nobody wants to be around that. Nobody wants to go through that. I want you to have an expectation from Jesus that he's going to show up every single time. Now, how he shows up, we don't always know, but he does every single time, every single time. He didn't take you this far to drop you. He didn't bring you this far to leave you or to put you to shame. Now, number two, the second woman, they kept their motives clean. They were found and blessed. They won it all. So, number one, the first person, due to entitlement motive, a motive of entitlement, they lost it all. The second person, now, some of the people that were in the number one category, they didn't lose it all. They just didn't attain the promise. They just lived a life. I don't want to be there. Okay, I want it all with the Lord. So, the second person, they kept their motives clean, meaning it didn't mean they never had a bad motive. What it means is they stayed like this with the Lord when the Lord said, that's not, the, you know that's not right. They changed. They shifted. They aligned themselves with the Lord over and over and over again on a daily choice, a daily decision, moment by moment, several times a day if necessary, to be in line with the Lord. So they want it all. They attained the promise. Now, the third woman or third person, insecurities caused them to operate in evil behavior. They had a demonic evil motive in their heart. And because they didn't keep their relationship like this with the Lord to hear his voice, or they were blinded by their own lustful desires for power, And fame, our fortune, money, money and wealth, they're not evil. It's why do you want it? Why do you need it? That's the issue right there. It's not wrong to want or need it for kingdom purposes. But many times people will say, oh, I want lots of money for the kingdom. I'll do this, 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 and this. And the Lord hadn't released that to you because first thing you're going to do is run down to a car lot and buy you some massive something vehicle that is not necessary or not in line with the purpose or plan that God has for you. Or maybe you would run to the mall and buy out every fancy wardrobe you could imagine, but God wants you to be a missionary in Africa. You don't need all them high heels in Africa. What are you doing? God's going to give you all the wealth at your disposal that is in heaven and it will manifest in the earth if you're walking in your purpose. So again, the third person had the insecurities, their heart motive, um, they had an evil agenda. It was selfish. They cooperated with evil motives in their heart so they could have a business, a ministry, fame, fortune. They abused people, stabbed people in the back, and this individual was one who revealed secrets of others. They would get in close to people to learn their secrets so that as that person reached um, and approached their door of opportunity, because all this third person was looking for was a door. They didn't care whose door it was. They assumed all doors were for them, that they just had to, that, that you know, just got to get my foot in the door somehow. Just got to, just got to. So they would learn people's secrets, act like a friend, then stab them in the back and run through the door. But what they didn't realize is the Lord pulled them over. They lost it all. They were pulled over and removed from usurping. Come on. They were pulled over and removed and prevented from usurping. So we're going to see in 2020 a pullover 
of many businesses, a pullover of political uh, improprieties, a pullover. of people operating in the body of Christ out of wrong motives, okay? Well, how can we see that in the world, you may be thinking. I understand how we can see it in Christians. The Lord disciplines his own. Um, you know, he will go in, he'll only tolerate things for so long, and then he'll stop abuse and things like that. But what about the world? Well, there is that time of great vindication. In order for you or other people Nations, countries, whatever it is, children, whoever's being abused, in order for them to be vindicated, the evil or the evil that's operating through the people, the people doing the evil, are what? Halted, arrested, exposed, pulled over, stopped. And it's at that time, even before then, again, there's three levels of exposure. Privately in the prayer closet, with you and the Lord and whatever intercessors he tells, then there's the second level of exposure where just a few people find out. Maybe your spouse, maybe your boss, or uh, just upper staff you work with, whatever. And then level three exposure is when everybody finds out what you're doing because you didn't repent here, you didn't repent there, and now it's all out there. At whatever level of influence you have, it's just slung all out there. All your dirt and trash is up in everybody's face. And so we're going to be seeing that. So if you've noticed, and don't let it be condemnation, but if you've noticed any of person number one, person number two, or three in yourself, you want to be that person number two who is the faithful friend, who is obedient to the Lord, but again, none of us are perfect. The Lord is perfecting us. So if you see yourself sliding off into person number one of entitlement, but in a negative way and not uh, with boldness and faith that God is going to provide for you, but expect, well, you know, I've seen this with people. You know, I've even had people say this before. Um, there was a time for seven years all my prophetic words were submitted to someone who shipped them out all over America to different prophetic um, churches and groups to determine if I was of the Lord or not. And then after, well, they continued for seven years shipping them out. I don't know why, but um, after one and a half or less than two years, but more than eight, one and a half years, they determined I was of the Lord and not false. Everything that was written came to pass. Things that were um, not things that the devil could... Um, you know, know or trick or something. It was things that, you know, it was put through stringent tests or whatever to determine that that's something that only God would know or could tell. Uh, a lot of things, especially about politics and um, different people who would be this, 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 and how certain situations would turn out and all that kind of stuff. Or situations that were going to occur before, long before they ever occurred and many different things like that. And so... Anyway, um, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We praise you. We worship you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I've had people before say to me, Oh, who do you think you are, you little stream you? Um, we forgive when things like that happen, but that is that entitlement spirit when someone is like, I'm a big stream. Who do you think you are, you little stream you? But they're a Christian. They're someone who loves the Lord. But entitlement like that nature of that kind, I'm bigger and better and better than everybody else because I come from a long line and generation of all these Christian people and who do you think you are and ah oh, la 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 la. And they don't even know you. They don't know if all your generations went back further than theirs being Christians. You know? It's a type of pride. It's a form of pride. Okay? We don't want to be prideful. We want to be bold and have be full of faith. Faithful. <laughs> okay? Full of faith. Faithful. Not faith depleted. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Adelina, hello. Adelina, that's accurate as far as we don't need necessarily man's validation internally. We need that validation by God, but because God calls us, us to have favor and to operate in the earth realm, we must grow in favor with God and with man. And if you are walking indeed, validated by God, he will cause man to validate you. Not all men, but certain people, the right people, to open doors of opportunity for you. Jesus had to grow in favor with God and with man. Luke, I think that's in Luke chapter 2. At the end of that chapter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. People often ask, um, you know, when I put out the advertisements for the university or the school, people say, how dare you charge? How dare you this? All that information is freely given. And I'm like, yeah, well, my time costs something. Running a ministry costs something. Liberty University, you try to attend Liberty University and see, they're going to laugh at you when you walk up in there and say, you should be doing this for free. How dare you? And we scholarshiped half our students last semester. Half of them got, we had scholarship funds come in. Okay? But I encounter that oftentimes. People will say things like that. Or, why are you ordaining people? God ordained them. Because there are certain rules, laws, and regulations in the nation, in certain states in particular, that say uh, you can't marry people or perform burials or certain types of things without being legalized in your state to do so with paperwork. So there are times where you must, in order to fulfill the purpose God has put on your life, if you don't go through some type of thing to do what God wants you to do, to be recognized by people, you will not accomplish the goal or the plan that God has for you. But there are other times you can't let a non-acceptance hold you back from being obedient and speaking or saying or doing. But obviously we don't disobey the laws of the land unless it violates God's word, okay? And that means to the point to where it would cause you to sin, Obviously, there are laws in the land about abortion right now that say um, you can kill a baby. Well, that violates the word of God, but I'm not going to run out there with a gun and start shooting all the people performing abortions. Because they're violating the word of God. That'd be crazy. Now, if they tried to force me to have to do certain things that was against the word of God, that's when you draw the line in the sand and say, I shall not. So boldness is coming on the saints of God. Supernatural signs and wonders. Thank you, Martha Ann. That is so sweet. Oh, Jenny, that is sweet. She said she received a scholarship and she's grateful. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Cheryl, I see you. The Lord accelerating your mode of transportation, so to speak. In the realm of the spirit, you're flying at hyperspeed. Okay? Just zooming, 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 zooming. 
and you've gone out like a blade or like a frisbee. It looks like a frisbee, um, but made of metal, silver truth. And it's like your words when you pray are that truthful frisbee, that silver, that, that word of the Lord, and it flies out and hits the enemy target head on, dead on. It's very accurate. You're causing great damage in the kingdom of hell. And what you're doing, the sacrifices that you're making, sometimes people don't understand it, but it is pushing the generation that's coming up behind you. You're making way for them to come in and to build. You're hitting walls of hindrance, and the walls of hindrance are coming down. The enemy is backing up. And the enemy is taking fatal blows. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you want to be a part of Emergence University, classes start back the week of January 12th. That's coming up right around the corner. That's less than two weeks away, you guys. So message me and find out how. I'll send you the information packet. But find out, um, don't ever let money hold you back, okay? We do have, some people just take a course or two. They just want to build their lives or learn some things they didn't know. Other people are wanting certification or a licensing or ordination, okay? So, um, but not everyone who joins Emergence University wants to do for that reason, they just, especially like some people just take the finance course. They want to know the biblical truths. And, you know, I have some financial stuff going on, some great things in my life. Paid for house and ministry. The ministry value doubled twice just this year alone. In February, it doubled. And then again, um, in uh, October. Bam, bam. In one year showing you some ways on how God did that in my own life. We also have the course on how to publish your story. We give you three different ways. There's three teachers, myself, Don Brown, Wesley Roderick, three different ways on how to publish your story and different routes you can take to get your message, your book done anywhere from free to a few hundred dollars to thousands depending on what the purpose for your book is, how much money you do or do not have to work towards that project or goal that God's given you. We have an evangelism course. How to be bold with the statement of the message of the gospel. How to minister. Like, do I, what do I do in that moment? You know, do I give that person a financial testimony because finances are doing great in my life, but they've got their arm in a cast. They probably don't need a financial miracle. They need a healing miracle. So it would be the healing. What has God done to heal you before? That's the testimony. Just recognizing things, simple things like that in that evangelism course. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The workbooks are optional. Each one comes with a list of books you can purchase or not. I try to make it affordable and effective for every single person on the planet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have that relationship course. It doesn't even have a book published yet. Um, but I'm telling you, that one, when I taught that, I learned a few things. I'm just going to be honest. I, I remember thinking when the Lord told me to do that, I said, uh -huh. <laughs> I knew a lot of things, but then there were things I was like, and then I listened as I was teaching it going, because God can use, all we have to do is be a willing vessel that opens and allows God to flow through us. Just say yes to the Lord. So if you need help in any of these areas, you know, you may not want to be a minister. You may not want to be a preacher, an apostle, a prophet, or whatever. Um, you know, as far as building yourself into one of those kinds of things. Does that make sense? You may just want some functional truths. I call that those the function levels. You know, the foundation is Jesus. We've got four foundation levels. And then 
the other ones are function, how to function in life, how to do life to the best of your ability, how to get rid of some of those crazy things that's maybe from the enemy holding you up in the courts of heaven, how to stop witchcraft in your life. We have a prayer class as well, but I'm telling you, God has surprised me, totally shocked me, rocked my world. And it's all made up of a bunch of wonderful people like y'all. Many of you are even on here who help with this. Your volunteers, your own staff. And I try to bless the staff. Um, I've, I've got the list. I've got what every book the staff members wanted. Some of them have already had some books. Some didn't. Um, and as part of their Christmas... You know, we sew back into those who help us. Not only do they get to attend the university for free, but, you know, we sew back into them as well because they're what they're, they're putting out their time, effort, and energy into y'all, into me. Come on. So I've got to line up everything on the floor today with their names and then put the books on their name. And then uh, get that off to everybody. So, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But sometimes people want mentored specifically more than just the university classes. Everyone who takes the university classes, I still speak with them an hour every eight weeks. They get like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour of my time personally to talk with them about some stuff. It's usually more like um, just talking like as friends, things like that, getting to know each other. But, um, Sometimes the prophetic jumps out in that. Sometimes it's not. It's just whatever Holy Spirit is wanting. And, but some people need more than that. They want more than that. And we have that mentoring. Anyone that is mentored who pays for the mentoring, and right now it's 50% off of whatever price. If I send you a packet about the mentoring, take 50% off of the regular prices in there. Okay? Half off. Um, right now to the end of January. And I only have a few slots because I can't mentor but a few people. But what's included with that, people want to know. Um, it's an hour every single week that we talk. You get to tell me five to ten things that you want to work on. And it is like a minimum of a three-month commitment because we want change. We don't want you just to get a little something, walk away and go, ah, and you revert back to the old ways or something. But anyone who does the mentoring, they're added to the university for free but as a perk. You know, you kind of, you kill two birds with one stone. So, um, but a lot of times people with the mentoring, and it includes things like business, your relationships, ministry. Maybe you need help getting your ministry off the ground. Maybe you need help you know, more hands-on, one-on-one attention with your finances or your health. You know, I used to be morbidly obese. So what is it I do now? You know? What was it I did to drop the weight? What was it God did? Some of it was natural and some of it was supernatural. It's getting your mind in every one of these situations. It's just aligning your mind, your heart, will, emotions, thoughts, the mind, everything up with who God says you are. It's just agreeing with him. When we agree with him, the supernatural crashes into our life. Kairos and Kronos time collide with one another. And victory comes every single time. And that's one of the missions that he has me on, is training and equipping people. I have successful things going on in my life. And I'm just trying to show you what it was it that I did to get there. I was sterile and yet birthed seven children. I survived domestic violence and abuse for 15 years and came out of that. And when I jump on live streams, I don't spew bitterness and poison on people. How did I get like that? How did I get there?
private message me. A lot of you are saying, I want to do this. I want to sign up. I want more information. I need that. I want that. Private message me so I can send it to you. But again, make sure when you look at those figures, don't go, Ugh. It's 50% off the regular prices in the packet. And if we need to break that down into smaller payments for anybody, we can do that. Because I know one person, um, I, this week today, that's another goal that I have today, is to everyone who has signed up for mentoring. Um, there are a couple of you that sent me stuff. Um, and one person did this because it had just never popped into my mind. They said, here's uh, my initial pa payment towards such and such. And I was like, what? I was half asleep. I think my phone had gone off. I can't remember if it was like 1 a.m. in the morning. They were in a different time zone. So for them, it was still early. Um, or it might've been 5 a.m. or something. I don't know. I think it was like 1 a.m. And I'm like, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I woke up the next day and I said, Lord, what, what are they talking about? My math and their math is not adding up. And the Lord said, go back and read what they said. They said a payment to words. And so I was like, oh, that wasn't an option offered in the brochure, but I get it now. But I guess it can be an option offered in the brochure. Some people may, may need to pay a loan as we go as opposed to the entire amount. So again, I try to work with people. I have people oftentimes who have signed up or joined the university and they're like, Something terrible came up. My next payment is due, and it's Wednesday. I don't get paid till Friday. What do I do? Do I just not show up for class until I can pay? What do I do? And I'm like, well, you just pay what you can when you can. And they're like, what? I said, yes, because God knew you would have an issue. God knew that there would something was going to come around. Why would God let that happen? One, to get them to realize God is a good, good Lord. And he controls the favor that you have with a person, but also to test my heart and my spirit to see where I am. Am I going to be all about money or am I going to be like, you know, God's got me. You pay when you can what you can and be honest about it. Because there are times where the Lord will tell me, well, they just didn't want to do. They had it. They have it. But then there'll be times where the Lord is like, they really went deep in their pockets. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And you know, what do I do in situations like that? The person who went deep in their pockets or really, you know, they had decided to do extra. I'm like, yep, you're fine. You're fine. Get back with me when you can. <laughs> you know? Why? Because there are people, I've had people needing a scholarship. This happened with one person. They needed a scholarship. They couldn't pay. So they were scholarshiped in one class. The next time... Um, probably 10 or 12 weeks after that, when the next session came up, um, they contacted me and said, oh, I can pay this time. I said, oh my gosh, how wonderful. And they said, I want to also bless, God has blessed me enough not only to pay my own this time, but I've got enough to uh, scholarship another person. And I said, wow, thank you. So I divided that up between three different people to lower their bills so that they could get in. God is amazing at all of this. So these are some of what I'm doing is what I will be helping you to extrapolate and put into your life, whether you do the university or the mentoring, because if you do the mentoring, you get both. <laughs> you get both. Uh, but then I've had people, this one uh, sweet lady, she asked me for a scholarship. So I sent her some of the guidelines and, you know, just told her for the scholarship, you sow your best seed. Um, and unless God highlights your name and says they're lying, they're just being deceptive, and that, that's only happened once. But I'm just saying. So they do that, and we put them in and use those monies to go towards their tuition. And um, we have the codes so they can register on the website now. Anyway, so what was interesting about this, Lord help me, focus me. We're in that corporate fast. So my mind is like, <laughs> help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Anyway, she asked for the scholarship information. I sent her that packet. And she paid more than what the course was worth. And I said, she said, thank you for the scholarship. And I said, ma'am, what are you talking about? You paid more than what the donation amount was. 
that was necessary for you to be added to the course. Did you misunderstand the information I sent? She said, no. Thank you for the scholarship information. I will pass it along. And I decided to pay for mine and scholarship towards someone else's. Thank you so much. Love you. And I'm like, okay, bless you. <laughs> I thought this lady did not understand. She must have added a zero to what she thought the course was saying. Please donate. <laughs> anyway, um, so I just thank the Lord for the opportunity of being me in the earth. And thank the Lord for y'all being so kind and generous and being a family um, some people join because they want that family in that tribe. They don't have anyone local where they're at that will recognize their gifts. And that, and I'm not talking about people recognition. There are sometimes people in a season of their life need validated. They're not crazy or screwballs. That you've not lost your mind. That you are hearing God. That part of discernment is seeing demons. You see God. You see angels. But you will too see demons. Okay? And, and I can remember the first time the Lord told me to go live on a video. He says, your mission in the land, make certain you tell my people they're not crazy. Show them. He said, you went through some hell to be where you are right now. I have given you a platform so that you can pull those that were put in the loony bin in the crazy house by their family members or even the church and told you can't operate like that. God doesn't do it like that. You're crazy. You've lost your mind. That they're not crazy. They haven't lost their mind. And what is going on with them is from me. It is not the devil. It is not them being crazy. The voices they're hearing is discernment and not the devil. They may be hearing the devil, but it is the gift of discernment, and I will show them how to use it as a weapon in the kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. A sword of truth is flaming. The sword of the Lord is flaming, and it is twirling. And it is spinning super fast, hyper speed. The Lord is zooming. He's restoring, redeeming, reversing, re rewinding, and even fast forwarding whatever is necessary for time to be redeemed in your life. For time to align itself with the times and seasons that the Lord has purposed for you. Did the devil, do you feel like the devil slowed your times and seasons up? Mm-mm. Maybe he did, but God, in just a moment in the blink of an eye, has just realigned you. I speak realignment to every single person on here right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Ha! For those who felt like you had a weight on you, I cut those weights. I command the chain that had the weights on you that the enemy thought this will be their watery grave. They won't recover from this, but you have recovered. Those weights are broken. You will not go down. In Jesus' name. Mm. I'm going to give y'all a couple of, I don't know, about 30 to 45 seconds or a minute or so, just whatever, a couple of minutes to sow right now if you want to sow into this ministry. If you want to sow into this word. If you just want to bless and be a blessing. God may highlight to you a different ministry. But I feel like there is a sowing that is necessary. As you go into 2020. And again, it may not be this ministry, but there is someone. God is highlighting something or someone, whether it is me or someone else, in 2020. Before you roll over into 2020, sow a seed into your future. Name it. Put a name on it. What it is that God's promised you. This is the promise you promised me, Lord. You said, you said, you are showing me this for 2020. I stamp it, claim it, name it. And some people don't like it when you say stuff like that. They're like, oh my gosh, claim it, name it, oh. Yeah, well, you're not going to be so, you know, happy if God gives you a promise and you can't get people to agree with it. And you're like, just, I just, this is what he's told me. Well, you got mad at how God wanted it to come about. We're saying that every single person on here, you are going to step into your adult shoes, so to speak. You know, when we're little children, we want to walk in daddy's shoes. Everybody wants to walk in their mama or their daddy's shoes. 
You just want those. You can't wait for your feet to get big. This is your season where your feet have grown. And they've grown into the new shoes, the shoes Daddy made for you, where you were always like, those are the big girl's shoes. Those are the big boy's shoes. Oh, my gosh. You're in those shoes. You're in it now. You're in it now. Oh, you need prayer? Oh, Cheryl, thank you for sending in the mail. Thank you so much. Our P.O. Box, 2900. I don't know if there's two zeros or three. It is, um, anyone who needs to send, send something in the mail, ask me for the address, but it is Shreveport, Louisiana. <laughs> and the zip code has changed to 71149. 71149. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so get, Mr. Gary said, Barbara's son is in rehab now. Thanks for your prayers. Ah, oh, well, we just praise the Lord right now. Father God, we thank you. Oh, thank you for those. I see Cash App. Thank you so much. Somebody just sewed. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Martha Ann said, what is the address? Please message me in Messenger for the address so I can shoot that to you. It's on my phone. Um... It's 29006, I think, P.O. Box, 29006. There may be a third zero in there, so I need to, uh, you just send it to my, message me, and I'll get that to you. It's Shreveport, Louisiana, 71149. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jenny, you know what? I can get up right now. Let me walk over there and see if I can find a piece of uh, mail. I just got mail yesterday and gifts, so let me look. It's over here on the table. There's only two zeros. It's 29006. Ah! 29006. P.O. Box 29006. And, um... I ended up getting gifts, more gifts for Christmas. Thank y'all so much. And the new year. On my doorstep yesterday, I was like shocked. I was like, oh my gosh. And then I got some at the post office as well. Sometimes people go, well, how come they got to mail something at your house? Well, if I know them personally. <laughs> if they've come to the prayer house, I know them personally, known them for years, they get to. Thank you, Teresa. And again, that's Shreveport, Louisiana, 71149. But if I know them personally, I let them mail stuff here at the house. If I don't know you personally, don't take be offended if I send you the P.O. box. But I will get it. And so yesterday I went to the P.O. box. I got stuff from Austria. Vienna, Austria. Oh, my goodness. And then um, stuff came to the house here at the door. Thank you for the awesome woman of God who is on here who painted me um, a beautiful rock. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, and sent all those cute little things with that. Thank you for the family that um, bought me. I had been using two sets of flashcards in the university to get all the information that I needed for the letter, the Hebrew letters, so what it looked like, what its number value was, and its meaning. I really went from three different sources, two sets of flashcards, and then a third, which was a book that I had to open up and scroll through very quickly as I'm teaching it. So what they did, this family blessed me when they took the course. Evidently, they were like, she needs help with that. It needs to all be in one place. And I didn't really have time because God had me doing all these other things to stop, create my own flashcards and such. They bought me from a company that already had Hebrew flashcards that had all of what I had from those three sources on one card. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! So... And, and see, I didn't get that the first time out the gate that I taught that course. This is for somebody. I just want to tell you this right now. This is for somebody. I taught the Israel course one, two, three, four, four times. Four times I taught it with those three different sources just for the Hebrew letters. Okay? Before God gave me the blessing of it all being in one place with these beautiful flashcards. So how long are you going to have to be faithful? It ended up being a whole year. I taught it a whole year. Or a little over a year. Okay? How many times are you going to have to do something and be faithful in it before God makes it easier for you? 
because he will. If you're faithful, God will make it bigger, better, and grander. So let's go back here uh, again. We just thank you that um, that young man uh, that's in rehab comes out of there, stepping into his destiny and purpose in Jesus' name. Happy New Year, Shabazz. Okay, Jenny says, pray for her best friend's mom. They've given two to six months breast cancer. They've been fighting it for decades. They said it was in the spine, the bones, and the brain, the lining of the brain, the liver. Lord God, we ask you right now to go into this woman's body with the fire of who you are, your glory, your anointing, and burn out and eradicate for your glory so it just shocks and puts in all the doctors of who you are. And even her, let her see the goodness of you in the land of the living Lord God. In Jesus' name. Whew, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Pam, for agreeing with that. Mm. I have a word for Callie. Lord God, we just thank you for Callie's life. And I have been seeing this on you for, I guess, as long as I've ever known you. But this year, like other times, I've seen a bunch of closed books. There might be one open or something or writing and different things. This time, I see you with a giant book. And it is open. It is not closed. It is not locked to you. Not only does that represent books in the natural of you um, writing and doing such things as that, um, but it also represents that the things of God are not hidden from you. That Lord, the Lord is showing you and I feel like he's, he's this. The Lord is showing you all. The Lord is showing you all. Or most, more than, many. What it is he's up to in the earth. What he is that he's doing in people's lives. What he's doing in the kingdom of God. Politically. With angels. With um, people with ministries. Um... It's like I see you getting a lot of downloads and information about large ministry name people. And others on here might be going, well, why would God tell her that and not tell me? Well, it's not anything bad or that, you know, you're wrong or anything like that. It just, Or something's wrong with you and God can't. But there are times where God can trust a person with his heart. And Callie, you've been through a lot of testing And the Lord can trust you with the things that he shows and tells you. And it's giving you the opportunity to intercede and pray for those people. And to see, it's like it's building your faith also because you're able to see as God shows you things, they're playing out. So you're having more and more faith in God and more and more faith in who it, your gifts are in you. It's him operating through you and how you function. Because there's greater coming. Greater is coming for you. Greater, 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 greater. It's the greater. We're in the time of the greater. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we just take authority over any throwing up and vomiting of that one-year-old right now. Uh, you have said she's been throwing up for a week. We uh, command that to halt and to cease in her body right now in Jesus' name. And as I was praying and interceding for her, I literally felt a gag reflex. If this is not viral or bacterial, but has something to do with a gag reflex, felt like something was trying to choke or close my esophagus up, whether that is an allergic reaction or just a gag reflex that got um, irritated and just decided to keep doing it because it's, I, I've seen that before in children, especially where they've gagged for so long that the body just... It, it doesn't want to calm down. We speak a calmness on that. Soothing to her body and a calmness right now in Jesus' name. We command vomiting to stop. Whatever's causing it to line up and to be healed. We pray for everyone right now involved in the um, with concerning the young boy in Middleburg, South Africa, who went missing swimming in the sea in Mozambique. Mozambique.
we're agreeing with you right now on what you're saying. Shelly, I have seen that. Um, I had two of my children. They were vomiting, and after several days, it didn't stop. But they were still eating and drinking. They were dehydrated. Stuff would, you know, it was like it was just happening ever so often. Especially, I noticed, at bedtime. And I thought, this is crazy. What kind of a virus is this? So, I called the doctor. And um, they had had fevers, and it went away. And the doctor was like, oh, give them Benadryl. And I said, excuse me, they're puking. And I got, you know, I, you know, this was years ago and I wasn't so sanctified then as I am now. And so I didn't cuss him or anything like that. I said, excuse me? I said, what kind of a doctor are you? I said, they're vomiting. I didn't say they had runny noses. Benadryl is for drainage. Did you get your medicines mixed up? You know, I was like, I had been up for days. I was not a happy camper. And the doctor said, they're puking due to fleeing being on their stomach. And I was like, I gave them Benadryl, and they stopped puking. I kept them on that Benadryl for about three days. And um, I weaned them back off of it. They had had runny noses for months, but it was always clear. But it wasn't all the time. It was just every once in a while. And But it ended up being phlegm in their belly was causing them that when they would eat, the food would not digest. And so after several hours of having undigested food in their body, their stomach was like, this is wrong, this is bad, and they'd puke it up. Amen. Amen, Pam. All inflammation in any sinus cavities and drainage, we command that to cease now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Well, sometimes they need more than Zyrtec, okay? Uh, when I first moved to Shreveport, because y'all know I packed up a whole house in ministry in Tennessee, Plus, I unpacked here, and we had to clean this house. We had to move in here sight unseen and uncleaned when I first moved in. There was a lot of dust. So, I took Zyrtec, Benadryl. I prayed supernaturally over myself. And I also, besides Benadryl and Zyrtec, I took uh, a form of Claritin as well in the daytime. So, I was on three. And I still had a nose just to pour in. But it didn't settle in my chest. I thought I was going to have to break out the Mucinex. And I was taking herbs and supplements as well. Uh, sinus, and at some point, I was also taking Sudafed. And so, I was like, I walk in signs, wonders, and miracles in the supernatural. And at first, I was just rebuking it. And that was it. And the Lord said, Tiffany, you've stirred up a lot of dust. I said, oh. Oh. <laughs> so, so, they may need more than just but we speak supernaturally that that thing dry up now in jesus name four-year-old boys christian jarvis jabari the two young ones <clears throat> Parents. Okay, what do they need? What do they need? We just agreed that they will serve the Lord and come into alignment with Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Elderberry syrup can't hurt the child. Just make sure it doesn't have tons of sugar in it. And if it does, you know, as long as they don't have sugar issues, they'll be fine. Um, but I, I know they have elderberry gummies. Um, but for a one-year-old, gummies might not be safe. Unless they, you know, you cut them up in smaller pieces. So it doesn't, you know, get hung in their throat. So I'm going to do that in Jesus' name.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just command that boy to be found in Jesus' name. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want y'all to enjoy 2020. And just know that when you go to bed this evening and wake up tomorrow, you're into the new. New, 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 new. Everyone who wants vehicles on here, yes, I'm agreeing right now with the Lord will open up an avenue and a door for you so that you have wheels right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So you can get to church and sing for the Lord. Amen. Um, I do want to say this, if you're local in the area, in Shreveport, Louisiana, come on out here. We have Sunday services now. From tw at, They start at 12 Central. Obviously, if you're in the area, then you're in the same time zone I am. But we do live stream the preaching part at 12 p.m. The services really start like at 11, but um, the live stream portion is at 12 Oh, wow. Pam just saw a truck go by that has the word Eden and Rejuvenate on the trailer. That is wild. That's wild. Hey, Christina. Hey, hey, hey. So, um... I'm going to hop off of here. Don't forget to contact me about the mentoring and the university. Um, addresses. Whatever it is you need. Oh, and I was explaining about the mentoring. It includes that, like I said, one hour each week. Um, we go over the different things that you tell me that you want to work on. Um, so we spend an hour on the phone each and every week. And there's three different levels of mentoring as well, though. And then um, there's texting, uh, messages, that kind of thing. So throughout the week, you're not still, quote, on your own. If something comes up and you need to call me back or you need to text me or message me because there's been an update um, and something needs to be talked about or discussed, you know? So that is part of that process. Um, and that's why it's, um, it's more involved than the university. Because university students, they get that one hour every eight weeks with me. Um, but with the mentoring, like I said, it is constant throughout the whole entire process. So, I'm going to hop over here. I love you guys. And 2020 is an amazing year. Absolutely amazing. And I'll talk with you guys later. See ya.